I think that most senior leaders, military for sure, but even in the business world, most senior executives are, are scared to death of social media. They look at it as something that could get them in trouble. And the, the other smart leaders realize, no, this is a great tool. This is a great tool to spread the message and prevent vacuums. Because in the business world, anybody can go online and say, well, I heard they're selling their headquarters or moving to Arizona and all. Next thing you know, you got a whole workforce and a tizzy and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you this. My, my, yeah. my premise is senior leaders did not grow up with social media. I did not grow up. But then you didn't grow up with it. You know, you were pre-internet. You know, you're much younger than me, but you're still, it was pre-internet. Uh, and so senior officers in the Marine Corps and senior businessmen, when, when you know, pre-2001, pre they, they didn't have to worry about it. Now I, I say you have to be at least adequate at social media. And I see a tremendous amount of leaders who are inadequate. The reason why they're inadequate, they're not even on it. And so I've seen very good businessmen lean out there. And from the military, I got to tell you, my beloved Marine Corps, I think, is lagging. I don't see any senior leaders out there routinely doing it. And the Army, I don't know if you've seen this guy. There's a general named, his last name is Beagle. Milford Beagle. He calls himself Beags, B-E-A-G-S. I don't know him. But I'm linked up with him. And so I click on his stuff. So the algorithm feed that guy is setting the precedent for social media interaction as a general officer. It's all appropriate. It's all timely. And, and if any military person or an executive is listening, go look this guy up. He's setting the standard for it. I don't know where he's learned it from. But he really is. And I'll bet you the majority of his peers across the services are like, I'm not doing that because I might make a mistake that could get me in trouble. And this guy's embraced it. And from what I can see, I mean, when he puts stuff up, Amy, hundreds, sometimes hundreds of response. Great, great job, General. Yes, we served 32 years, you know, together, you know, I'll go and all of it. It's just awesome. So I want to hear your thoughts about, I'm talking to all leaders now. You're talking to the podcast audience, but especially those that have been around a while, you can't run from this. Social media is here to stay. Thoughts? Yes, I would definitely echo that. I And I do follow Major General Beagle. He has uh, really changed the game and set the example. Mm -hmm. I love getting his content and uh really um, showing, paving the way and making it more comfortable. But you have to meet people where they are. And if your workforce is on social media and you're not, you're missing out on a chance to lead and be a thought leader and make an impact and be influential. And so the dynamics too are also shifting for, especially for military members, but there could be some uh, civilians out there who have a large following who can also be uh, your advocates for your organization, who have a lot of influence, who have tens, tens of thousands of followers. And if you're not tapping into them and connected with them and watching and listening and learning, you're really missing out. And so using these, in, I don't say influencers, but people of impact because information is the new currency. And so if you're not in the conversation, you these leaders, these organizational leaders, um, CEO, C, commanding officers, uh, CEOs, if you don't have a strong following on social media, I would say, I would argue that I just don't think you're that influential. If you can't be influential online and show who you are, what you're doing and engage with people in a meaningful way, how are you really doing that in real, per in real, right. you know, in per face to face. And so we have these people within our organizations who have learned and mastered how to do that, who have a lot more influence. So it up, it sort of upsets the balance of power, I would say, especially in the military. You could have a unit member, a sergeant, let's say an E5, an enlisted person in your in your organization who has 50,000 followers on Instagram. That's a lot of power. And yeah. so when you've got a CEO or a CEO who doesn't know the difference between LinkedIn and Instagram and doesn't know how all that works, yeah. 
Um, it could be very dangerous if you're not in the conversation, especially when it comes to crisis, because you're the one that's going to need to get out there and communicate uh, something important when the time comes. So you'd better be having a running start. And if you don't know it, now is the time to get on board, dabble in it, get a coach if you need to, get someone to help you and monitor and help you create content. And there's actually an organization out there run by um, a Navy uh, veteran who that's all they do is create and mo create content and monitor for C-suite, Fortune 500 um, people who don't have the time or their comms team yeah. is not doing that. But it's so important from a communication and a leadership. Show your leadership uh, through how you can communicate, whether it's funny, it's engaging, it's um, amplifying some something good about your someone in your workforce. You can say congratulations to them yeah. on a promotion through right. using these tools and that will make you a standout and a breakout leader.